You're listening to To Hatch a Pod. Stormwatch To Hatch a Pod. <laughs> Blizzard Watch To Hatch a Pod. This is like. I really <laughs> wanted an echo there, Corey. <laughs> oh my goodness. Welcome to To Hatch a Pod. Corey Costello, Greg Garrett, Ashley Whitmore, Don Marsh, Blizzard Watch 2023. And cut the music. Anytime. I think it's pretty awesome. I don't know why. I think we should keep it going the entire oh, podcast. Say, it, yeah. it really gives some I feel like this is all. the LA News or yeah, something. Yeah. I just know. Where's the green screen? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and and uh, we're, we, yeah, so welcome to Tatchapod. This is a uh, kind of storm preparation version of the podcast as uh, we get ready for, um, I don't know, could be a major storm event, could be a minor storm event. We don't know. We, we get uh, different changing uh, every hour, it seems like. So uh, we're going to, we brought in some folks today to uh, talk about all the different things that are going into preparing. Preparing for this level of a snow event, we've got Don Marsh, our public works director, Ashley Whitmore, who does general services, and the airport. We'll talk about what the airport does and does not do, and uh, Greg Garrett here as well. And also, right now, he is actually um, he's in our pinpoint, you know, weather center. Key Budge is joining us on the phone. Hey, Key, welcome to Tehachapod. How are you? I'm doing well. This is a, a new sound that you've created. It is. You like it? Tell me you like it. This is what happens when you leave. This is that when you're not here, Key? I guess so. I think Corey and I are the only ones really enjoying this. I, I'm just, I'm, you know, we're having a little fun here, but the the topic is quite serious, actually. That's why we conduct these podcasts. Exactly. So yeah, yeah. now we do have Key. I'll cut the music this time. All right, Key. Well, like he's Key's lampooned, and he's also under the weather. So he's, but he's gracious enough to join us. And Key still has been doing a lot of social media, uh, especially with these road closures, which 58's been closed off and on for the last several days. It'll probably be continued to be like that. So Key, what's uh, what's kind of your world been like the last? couple uh, days as, you know, Caltrans, CHP, Tashby Police Department, everybody's dealing with the different issues around the uh, in and out of the Tashby area. Yeah, it's, you know, this is the time whenever we have a weather event, people want information now. And that's the, the biggest thing. And for the way we're, you know, just geographically located, we're outside of media markets. So we don't get the constant TV coverage or radio coverage. And then Caltrans is based in Bishop, so we're the southern end of their, you know, area that they cover. Mojave is where CHP is based. So all of the impacts on the roads, they come from areas that are not in Tehachapi. So I'm monitoring all of their activity and communications and using our platforms as a centralized point to get it out to the public. And I've actually had a few compliments about that. Actually, some folks that were commuters especially yesterday with the off and on closures of 58. We're really appreciative of the the fact the city was posting photos uh, either from the Caltrans Quick Maps app of, of the road cameras they had or uh, different photos that were coming in of the actual conditions on 58 that seemed to be very helpful at the time. Yeah, that's you know an update that occurred in the last year or two from Caltrans where on Highway 58 we've got three cameras, one at Broom Road, one at the summit by the, the loves and the pilot, and another one over at the, the Cameron Canyon uh, area. So you're able to get, if you're on the Caltrans Quick Map app, you can uh, off, uh, add your options uh, to cameras. And when you see the little camera icon, you click on it, it gives you a real time snapshot of what's going on and what the conditions are. And they, as soon as you open it up, that's the snapshot you get. I know a lot of people can get frustrated when 58's closed, um, probably all of us, quite frankly. But it just takes one truck to jackknife, and then everybody behind it is is stalled, and then it takes hours to correct that situation. So any information we can get out to the public as quick as possible. I know, Key, you do a lot of social media like we're talking about now. People call City Hall. They talk to Grace or Jessica up front, and we're more than happy to transfer that information real time to, to anybody that, that, we, uh, that we come in contact with. Yeah, the real time is, is the key to the communications. I mean, Greg, you know, I mean, you wanted us to become our own news organization just based on the fact that we don't have media outlets up here that put out information on a timely basis. So we've kind of taken on that role in the community to be communication leaders, get information out. And then we work well with all of our sister government agencies at the state level and uh, county level and also uh, locally. Uh, just to get the info and then share it. So people are looking at us as that kind of conduit or contact point 
to get the info. So whether I'm sharing information that's coming out of the Mojave CHP or Caltrans out of Bishop, or I'm going to the app, collecting the data, and then creating a post, uh, it's just trying to keep updates out there, especially with these closures. I know a couple, several months ago, we actually took on an initiative to make certain that all of the agencies in the Tatchby area and beyond, CHP, Caltrans, County Roads, City, Golden Hills, whatever it happens to be, we're all exchanging names and personal cell phone numbers so that we can actually talk to our partners real time. And that's really been helpful because now we can pick up the phone and call the commander of CHP and and talk to Caltrans out of Bishop or whatever it happens to be. And that has really helped facilitate real-time information. I'm very proud of that. Yeah, that's one thing. And over the last couple of days, I've had those uh, cell-to-cell conversations with Caltrans and with the CHP, just making sure that we're all on the same page and the information is getting updated. I mean, you think about Caltrans in District 9, it runs all the way up to Inyo and Mono counties up to the, to the Nevada state line. Well, they've got a lot of snow going on up there on that northern end. So sometimes the southern end, it gets left and kind of gets forgotten, but I always try to nudge them and remind them, hey, let's make sure we're putting out the information for tax because thousands and thousands of people are traveling along 58. And then also the um, the Bakersfield uh, news stations. I know Don Marsh, our public works director, was interviewed by Channel 29 and 23, and then I was interviewed by Maddie Jensen from uh, Channel 17. And that gets, you know, there's so many different, we talk about this a lot, Corey, there's lots of different uh, avenues for information. And we're just really trying to push out everything that we know. And of course, Tatchby has lots of microclimates, things can change instantly. Yeah. You know, we'll say 58 is open, but then 10 minutes later, it's closed because of a jackknife. So, you know, bear with us, we are just trying to help facilitate the most current information that we have for anything weather related. And we're getting out pretty much as fast as I think that's a, people will sometimes call city hall. When's 58 opening? We, we don't know. We don't know that answer. We don't get sort of the, the tip off when it's going to happen. So the Facebook posts, those are pretty real time. Obviously we talked about the Caltrans quick maps uh, and that sort of stuff, but those are kind of the quickest way to get the data out. And, and that's how it's, you know, folks can get that information, but uh, we don't necessarily know when uh, when the road's going to be reopened, or again, you know what the how, how long it could be open based on these stacking snow, snow events we keep having. That's right. Yeah, just keeps going on. And with, and on. These, with these weather events, I mean, it's for anyone listening, if you really want real real time, download that Caltrans Quick Map app. That one to me is the best. It's the most accurate. It comes out of the dispatch centers from Caltrans, which is also with the uh, ties into uh, CHP, and they put out, as they're dispatching information, it gets updated on the app. So you're really getting real time. And then with the camera views, we looked and it was, we posted photos where the freeway was open, looked good, and within 30 minutes, it was like whiteout conditions, and they were getting ready to close the freeway. So things change rapidly up here in Tehachapi. So true. You know, in the city, we don't close any roads, do we, Don? <laughs> not unless no. we have to. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure. I mean, really, we're talking about 58, no. Highway 202, into Bear Valley. Sometimes the gate Tashby is Willow closed. Springs Road. Tashby Willow yeah. Springs Road. That'll probably be closed for the next week or so. Yeah, because absolutely. We're looking at snow and ice for, nice. for the next six or seven days. So You never closing. know what we get involved in. We, we actually assisted uh, Caltrans last night with the closure of 58 at um, – Tucker Road. Okay. We they asked us to help them with with road closure there, so we had guys out and helping with that. You yeah. know, on my way to work this morning, I took Tucker on purpose down. I just wanted to see. You know, typically there's trucks and cars everywhere. Now today there wasn't. I'm not sure why. Uh, maybe the highway patrol was able to push everybody down the hill, either east or west. But there were several people that were coming down Tucker, and they were expecting to get on the freeway. And I'm I'm looking at them. Um, I was a little confused because. They were confused. And I thought to myself, you left your house, you're coming here to f- you know, the Tucker on-ramp, and you just stop and look. What do you think is going to happen? I mean, I'm being a little critical here, but you know, looking, downloading the app would help. Looking at the cameras would help. I mean, even Google Maps will tell you that it's closed. Yeah. yeah. Apple Maps will tell you that the road, Waze will tell you. That. I mean, yeah. any smartphone will tell you it's closed. Yeah. So, yeah. But if you just look outside, it just, you go, oh, there's not that much snow. There's hardly anything on the on the road. So I'm sure the freeway is open. Right. Yeah. You know? 
Hopefully Quite a bit of ice out there, though. Hopefully they didn't come from It was pretty Bear cold, Valley pretty frozen something. this morning. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, But it's melted. It's Right now I'm looking out my window, and it's yeah. I can see asphalt. That's the beauty of Tehachapi, you know. Yeah. So, Key, what is the next, um, you know, given the anticipated, you know, snowfalls, whether they be massive, whether they be sort of normal, what's the next 24, 48 hours look like in terms of the communications we're going to be putting out here uh, as, uh, you know, as these, this con- these conditions continue? Yeah, we'll keep. I will continue to monitor all the agencies and, and provide updates, especially with the closures. I know everyone wants to, there's, people want to go to work. I mean, that's the one thing about our community is, is we are filled with people that are hardworking. They want to take care of their family. They want to get to their job if it's not here in Tehachapi. So I get it, the frustration. We'll try and provide information. We're not in control of you know these road closures. But if we can get information to them so they can make a better, more informed and safe decision about whether or not they get in their car or not, you know, then we'll try and assist them over the next couple of days through the storm. All right. Sounds good. You uh, know, and you, when you get in your car, too, and we, we talk about this a lot, if you're commuting out, whether it's to the AV, Bakersfield, whatever, you know, occasionally or routinely, you need to have water, snacks, blanket. You know, you we can't say that enough. People need to have in their trunk or in their car, you know, a little emergency kit yeah. because you could be stuck on that road for three, four, five, six hours the or one, more overnight. Maybe the one that made us scratch our head yesterday, though, Greg and I were watching the news and they said, porta potty. Yeah. We said, how the heck are you going to keep one of those in your car? I'm not sure how that works. They could tow your fifth wheel <laughs> behind you everywhere you go. I, I don't know. I'm not sure what that was about, but uh, I don't know. Maybe they meant like toilet accessories. Toilet paper? I don't know. I'm not sure. But I was oh, we like, got to get on Amazon see if we can buy, find a portable. That's weird. Portable yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that was their their big suggestion. Yeah, so it's going to be a rush at Walmart. I know portable. everybody. Yeah. <laughs> to hatch a pod, said it. Go get a bucket with a toilet seat on it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, Key. Thank you so much, and uh, we'll just get yeah. back to to uh, monitoring, and uh, and we'll 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 take it from here. Sounds good. Hey, just a big thanks to Don and Greg for making themselves available to the media. The media reaches out. And just getting it to them was, um, and you guys facilitating the interviews really helped. Very good. Perfect. Thanks, Key. Be well. Okay. Thank All you. Right. All right. Key Budge on uh, Tehachapod helping us out from his, uh, his, his Bear Valley area because uh, he's having, he's, it, you know, it's tough to get out there, number one. And anyway, so he's got a lot of monitoring still going on, a lot of things still to do. We want to talk roads a little bit. And uh, the man of the hour, that is Don Marsh, our public works director. And uh, Don, I think people need to speak. Uh, you've talked about this on those interviews that Key referenced to a minute ago. But what does public works do and and sort of not do in some of these storms? And and what when is sometimes maybe going out and plowing a road actually detrimental to the actual road as opposed to you know just clearing snow? Yeah, one of the things uh, there's been a lot of preparations over this week to get ready for this storm. First of all, um, but the the main thing is. That that we plow all the arterial roads. Those are the major streets, you know, Valley Boulevard, Curry, Tatchby Boulevard, Denison Road, um, Stuber, Mm -hmm. you know, out all the major streets. We do not plow city residential streets at all. Plowing those roads creates a lot of problems, first of all. Um, One of the things that people don't realize is that plowing does not remove snow. It just moves it from the middle of the street to the side of the street. So uh, when you start plowing residential streets, then you end up with other problems like people's driveways being blocked, cars that are parked on the street, they get blocked in. They um, It can cause damage to cars that are parked on the street. So uh, the, the, the unintended consequences of plowing residential streets are actually far greater than not plowing them at all. Yeah. So it creates lots of problems. It's certainly a dance, if you will. We're monitoring the situation constantly. We have been known to plow a couple streets that we wouldn't normally plow, but you know, coming tomorrow, Friday, this blizzard that uh, everybody is, is being told and, and preparing for, I hope, you know, we may or may not do a little different. You know, if we're going to get two, three, four feet of snow, who knows? I mean, Last night the news said forty plus inches. Miles Musio said fifty five inches. <laughs> you know those are those are numbers that are not even comprehensible almost. And so who knows what we'll end up doing, but certainly keeping our finger on the pulse, watching, monitoring, plowing, 
sand, cinder here and there, but there's always constant. There's a, there's not a plus plus it's sometimes a plus negative. Yeah. That, uh, you brought up sand and cinder that that's one thing that we do also lay down when there are extremely icy conditions that doesn't help with snow at all. So the, the sand and cinder is uh, a mixture of basically lava rock and sand. And we have spreaders that can put that down for icy areas when, when those are necessary. Uh, you mentioned earlier, Greg, that <clears throat> in Tatchby, usually if you wait an hour, the ice is melted. So we tend to only reserve that for extremely, extremely cold and icy situations. And um, it creates a big mess. And then we got to go clean it up afterwards. But um, like I said, typically an hour after it, it, um, the morning rush, it's it's melted. So, right. I know there's some people in the public that criticize. Why didn't you do this? Why didn't you do that? But the, if you look at the whole story, you know, A to Z, and our guys have been trained on what to do, how to do it. They've taken courses, you know, what's appropriate or not. And so we do a great job. So please rely on us to continue to do that that great job. And, you know, be be calm about it. You know, I know in Mammoth Lakes, they, they actually, their city sends out on their social media for their visitors, the tourism people that come in from Huntington Beach or wherever, you know, they're not used to snow. Please just slow down, mm-hmm. be calm, it'll be fine, you'll get to where you need to go, right? So every town that has a snow event, yeah. you know, struggles with this. Well, and, and for us too, I mean, we're kind of in a different boat. I mean, this weekend especially, if there's a massive snow amount shows up or even a decent amount of snow shows up, if you don't really have to go anywhere, and, and as in like have to, then don't. I mean, there's no reason to be out and about. There's no ski lodge to get to or anything. I mean, it's just you're here, so just, you know, be comfortable. There's no reason to get out and don't try to push it for no reason other than you just feel like I'm trapped in the house. I want to go to Walmart. Like, you just don't need to do that. So, And I wanted to bring up the, the visitors to Tatchby. You know, a lot of times people from the valley either – Bakersfield or Lancaster will come up here because of the snow. Yeah. Well, this weekend is not a good time to come up to Tehachapi. Plus, there are no public accessible areas to play in the snow. Yeah. There just is not in Tehachapi. Yeah. The Water Canyon Road is closed. It's closed. Except to residents. you will most likely be trespassing. And they will ticket you. Uh, The CHP knows people like to drive around those barriers that don't live up there. Mm -hmm. And until that road is clear, there'll be a time when the road's clear in a few weeks from now. There'll still be snow in Mountain Park. It'll be open. But right now, you cannot get up there. And uh, they will certainly ticket folks. And, and yeah, I mean, if you have a front wheel vehicle, you know, front wheel drive vehicle, um, you know, the best thing to do is just go in your car, take the battery cable off the battery, shut the hood, <laughs> and then the car will not start all weekend. Yeah. And then you can't go anywhere. <laughs> all right. That's the best way to uh, not be driving. I don't right know now. if anybody's going to actually take that advice. You know, I'm just saying. It'll just, I thought he was tempting. giving us some real advice there I for was, a minute. Yeah. Yeah, here's how you make your two wheel drive car work better in the snow. Yeah. Disconnect the battery cable. That is a true well, statement, not. especially for me. Yes. <laughs> uh, speaking of uh, airport and Ashley, uh, we want to get to the airport. So kind of similar story with Don, though. I think folks sometimes think um, this is not, our airport is certainly not, you know, LAX or Denver International. And we're turning on the runway heaters and the snow is going to melt away. Uh, as far as so far as, you know, maintenance at the airport and snow maintenance. Again, similar story. There's more sometimes damage and liability that can occur from actually plowing a runway as opposed to just kind of leaving it be. Absolutely. So you do need to have the right equipment, the right type of plow to go out and uh, take care of a runway when we have an event like this. We don't have that type of equipment because this type of event event doesn't happen very often. So you're risking more damage to the runway and the asset by plowing it than you are just kind of waiting it out and, uh, like Greg said, waiting for that sun to come out and melt the ice and everything. We do check uh, the airport daily, uh, make sure, see what the conditions are. We put in a notum, so that's a notice to airmen. So anybody that's potentially flying in or flying out should be checking those notums Mm -hmm. to see what the conditions are. We don't monitor those, and that is noted um, in those notums. So daily, like I said, it'll say whether or not there's ice, whether it's patchy, whether it's 100% covered. Um, so pilots know whether or not to come in. Right now, it is not a good time to come yeah. into the airport. <laughs> yeah, no, it certainly isn't. Um, and you know, the only planes equipped for that are those ones that were here for that stole event, right? Those big bush planes with the big giant wheels. Those are the only people that are probably, <laughs> uh, you know, willing or daring enough to do so. Yes, yes. And now's not the time. So yeah, we do have an AWAS system. 
So that gives the weather to the pilots and everything. Uh, the public can check that out too. Uh, they can just go to our website. Um, it gives the wind gusts and a uh, ton of information, visibility, uh, if anybody's interested in looking at that. Yeah, it's a real-time weather station at the Tatchby Municipal Airport. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, something that just reminded me, because my phone did ring in the background, it was actually Southern California Edison. Uh, this is something that we when we spoke briefly with uh, the current Office of Emergency Services, um, with Georgiana Armstrong, who's kind of over that for the County of Kern, the Emergency Operations Center, uh, called just to check in on us, what we're doing, preparing for the storm, that sort of thing. And, and one of the things I brought up was the only issue I could potentially see could be a prolonged power outage, especially if you have, we see this happen a lot in Texas when ice gets on overhead lines and that sort of thing, and this causes poles to fall and lines to break and that sort of thing and power goes out for a while so preparing for that i think a lot of that of us sort of are because that goes back to our psps days when we were worrying about the power being shut off because of wind events so uh, a lot of folks prepare prepared for that but uh don to you real quick there is the you know public works and the water and those systems we have generator backups on on all of that and then some yeah actually in almost every case we do have 100% redundancy. In many cases, we have actually 200% redundancy. So we have backups to the backups. So yeah. we're we're very well covered with our infrastructure um, power power backup. Yeah, and we'd expect all of our fresh water to keep flowing, all of our wastewater oh, yeah. to keep treated. And if you have a, a, a pipe or, a you know, your water's not flowing in your home, that's because your home pipes have froze, not the city system. Yep. Yeah. yeah, always. We get a lot of calls about that. So we always suggest, you know, just leave something, a faucet dripping um, if you're going to have weather like this. But if you do have something break, call City Hall. Our guys will come out, uh, you know, shut the water off if needed. Um, if you have a plumber coming out, if it's after hours, um, you could still call the 822-2200 number and it will direct you to our dispatch center, which will get you to one of our guys who will come out again and turn on or off that water if ever needed. Yeah, rather than leave it, leave it drip, maybe during the summer you could prepare and think about, you know, wrapping pipes, insulating that pipes too. before. Very true, yes. You know, I was curious, actually. Uh, I went to Home Depot yesterday just to see. I was curious. I wanted to go see their insulation, their pipe freezing stock wiped out. Of course. Mm, wiped shocker. Out. Oh, yeah. And I thought, well, okay, that's a good thing, right? People are doing it. But doing it in the snowstorm that's that's kind of uncomfortable, right? A little bit, right? Yeah, and this I, has I, been I, this has been you know a kind of a cold snap storm too. So right. it's been dropping to that hard freeze, and it's going to be prolonged too yeah. for the next several days. Adding to what Ashley was talking about, so we do have um, staff from Public Works on call twenty four hours a day. If you need your water turned on or shut off, call the eight two 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 zero zero number and talk talk to either the front counter or the dispatch and they will get one of our guys out 24 hours a day. It doesn't matter what time it is. They'll come out, turn your water off if it needs to be turned off or turned back on. Right. And it's not an answering service. So during the day, working hours, it's city hall. After working hours, that's transferred to our police department dispatch. So you're going to get a dispatcher, but that person is trained to talk to you about what's going on and they will dispatch one of our public works crews if need be. So we're 24-hour service. Do it all the time. Right. Yeah. And that happens a lot, especially the older homes in the downtown area get those uh, those issues. Uh, some of the newer ones are a little more well-insulated and prepared for that sort of thing. But we've seen a lot of that with the downtown homes, some of the older stuff. Um, those pipes just, you know, after a while, they, uh, they're they going to be more prone to freezing. So Surprisingly, actually, a lot of the older homes, though, have been around for a long yeah. time. <laughs> they, so they've, they've worked seen out all. all of those freeze yeah. points <laughs> yeah. over the years, and they've worked those out. They've but, seen it all, done it all. Yeah. Nice. Um, any, so what else are we, we, on terms of, you know, this well, we is, set up our emergency operations center, did. EOC. Mm-hmm. So I know Corey, Ashley and Tori Marsh went over yesterday uh, and we decided that we would set up our EOC emergency operations center at the police department. So that is for two reasons. One, it's, it's, it's good training for us as uh, city employees because we're first responders, all of us. Uh, and we can set that up, make sure that our computers, our phones, and that way we have a communication center so that we can coordinate with all of our partners that we talked about earlier. But also, more importantly, God forbid, should we need it? If this blizzard comes true, and we do get one, two, three, four, five feet of snow, who mm-hmm. knows, uh, there may be an actual need, and we may activate the EOC. And then we have uh, the ability to communicate, as I mentioned before, if there are issues, uh, we can talk to the state and federal government. 
We can get reimbursed for certain things that we may need to do. So who knows? But rest assured, our EOC is open and ready to be activated if need be. Not publicly accessed, right? People are not, you know, we're not inviting people in. This is kind of a command center that talks to other uh, state and, and federal agencies. And it also puts our own stuff. I mean, our first thing we would do once activation is it's just a status check of everything, right? We check water, sewer, you know, power, what's going on, where, you know, where, where are we at? The police department's involved, obviously, from the operations standpoint on the law enforcement side. And by the way, we'll also get at the end of this podcast, we get a message from our acting Lieutenant Jason Dunham has got some, uh, you know, just advice about driving right now. But um, anyway, we have these different, and then obviously uh, with the planning departments and then, uh, infrastructure. So we'll kind of status check all of that and then see what we do from there. And again, I think prolonged power outage is a potential. That's kind of one of the biggest concerns. Um, and so those are the things to watch, but, and that's kind of leads to the next deal about preparation. I think everybody is, should be by this point, after all the different various emergencies we faced in the last uh, couple years, I'm about tired of being a part of these, uh, you know, one to 100 year events. I could probably pass that to the next hundred years by now think i've seen my fair they share. should be one in every 10 years maybe. Uh, yeah, somebody you know, needs to recalibrate all that we just got you know we were all born in the wrong 100 year span because we could deal with all these 100 year events right it's unreal uh, or they just didn't keep very good records 100 years ago and then the, the timing was just off but um you know i think between psps and earthquake preparation that sort of thing hopefully everybody has some basic essentials on hand for a couple days and i say that because you got to think on a few re- reasons obviously prolonged power outage and that's one issue but if the Highway 58 has been going to be closed for a couple days, nothing's getting in or out. So basically what you have here is what we have here. And uh, and so be prepared to not be able to just run and go to the grocery store for every little thing. Uh, and, you you know, it's going to be uh, what you have on hand is going to be very important. Absolutely. And you everybody should at least take a look at the FEMA website and make sure they do have their three-day emergency prep uh, supplies at home. Yeah. yeah. And we're talking about real-time information. You know, Key just texted me. And said that 58 is now open. So it's 930 in the morning on Thursday. And so, boom, 58's open. Key's putting that on our social media. Obviously, it'll take us a little bit to post this, Corey, I think, on our yeah. on our platform. It'll be done but, Thursday. You know, Thursday who knows, 58 might, might be close by the time you post this. You never know. But I guess my point is, Key has his finger on the pulse. And he's communicating out real-time information. Well, the big thing, too, that he just pointed out, and this is what we brought up with him briefly was our posts on all our platforms, Facebook and Instagram have reached and been seen by 250,000 people in the last two days. That is a huge number. Yeah. He already has it up. Yeah. It's already up. Look at that that quick. He's in the (laughs) command center. I'm telling you, he's in the, uh, you know, he's in the weather center right now. So key. Oh, I know Key's home because he's under the weather, but I w- don't think that he's going to be working from home routinely. Yeah, yeah. We come to work. I think that's the under the weather. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> there you go. He's on the weather and under the weather. Yeah, mm. that's yes. that's his new tagline. So, uh, no, that's, but that, that goes back to what we were saying. People are paying attention to our stuff and using us kind of as a news yep. organization right now. Yep. Um, and so there's going to be a lot of that. So a lot of changing. But, yeah, back to your point, Ashley, on having your three-plus days – of stuff on hand, uh, super important. And rotating that. Rotating that, yeah. I do that once in a while. You know, I'm like, oh, I should check this rice. (laughs) Yeah, I should probably check, I should cook this one and add the new one I just bought into the the EOC bag. That's funny because remember Y2K? Oh, you're too Yes. Oh, absolutely, I remember Y2K. Yeah, there was this, you know, the earth was going to, crack in half, right? I'm not sure what was going to happen. Yeah, all the software was going to go back to 1900. Yeah. And then therefore, they everything would have crashed. Yeah, so I got didn't. caught up in that. I had rice and beans and sugar, all kinds of stuff in my shit. <laughs> and last summer, I'm like, what are these no. five-gallon buckets? Oh, and I looked, I'm like, oh, my God. Anyway. They're all full of weevils I, and stuff well, by that point. I just threw them out. But I'm like, holy <laughs> moly, I forgot it was there. No wonder he kept bringing rice to the potlucks. I was wondering, <laughs> you know, this guy sure made a protein <laughs> in that rice. Yeah, and right. you know what I did for salt? These capers? I just got a salt lick. You know the cow salt licks? <laughs> I kept that, though. I still have that much yet. You never know, right? Salt, you got it. The human body's got yeah, to have salt. chiseling it with right. a little oh, ice. You know, No, you just lick it. Let's try to put some of my French fries here. <laughs> my survival fries. I'm yeah. trying to put some salt on here. Well, you could always find a McDonald's fry underneath your seat, right? And, and it'll you last could, forever. Like, salt it up, and away you go. Still good, just like McDonald's. <laughs> oh, goodness. Uh, anyway, yeah. And that goes back to the preparation again. Have that food on hand. Restaurants are going to be closed. Some have closed already. They don't want staff traveling. I right. get it. Uh, so don't rely on restaurants to be open and that sort of thing. 
Uh, and just, uh, yeah. And then I think Greg brought up a good point a couple uh, with one of his interviews. Uh, check on your neighbors. Help each other out because help might be sometimes far away. And uh, so make sure you're, you're making yourself available to your neighbors and helping them out, especially the elderly uh, in this, uh, this time. And just, yeah, be, uh, be prepared and be, uh, be smart about it. So. Right. Absolutely. I guess we're kind of wrapping it up. Lord, my, my, uh, my final remark is breathe, be safe, and really understand what you're doing, where you're going, why you go. Be, maybe it's a good time to meet your neighbor. If you've yeah. ever met your neighbor right now, it'd be a good time to knock on their door so that in the next couple of days, you, you kind of know each other. Yeah, absolutely, for sure. All right, anything if you, else? If you are driving, please slow down. Right. Yes. Don't tailgate. Yes. This morning on the way to work, there was this guy that was tailgating three people. I thought, dude, what are you doing? Yeah. Why? You're not going to get on the freeway. I don't know where you're going anyway. <laughs> you know? Yeah, and lining up when the freeway is closed, lining up like you're going to be the first one to go when they open, that does no good either. So, yeah. you know, get a hotel room and hang out for a while. Yeah. Uh, and that's a good segue, though, too, Don. We talked about uh, slowing down. I want to play this message. Uh, we're going to throw it in. It's, this is our acting uh, lieutenant, uh, Jason Dunham, regarding driving uh, from the Tashby Police Department. Hello, this is Jason Dunham with the Tashby Police Department with a quick reminder to avoid traveling unless absolutely necessary. Shall you have to travel, make sure you slow down and give yourself plenty of space that you can stop at intersections. You can always monitor the current traffic conditions at any of the City of Tashby's social media accounts by accessing the Caltrans Quick Map app, by calling 1-800-GAS-ROADS, or by visiting kerncountypublicworks.com. Uh, just a reminder, stay safe, stay warm, and everything will go back to normal as soon as these storms pass. All right. Well, great advice from uh, from Acting Lieutenant Dunham and uh, Ashley, Greg, Don. Thanks so much for joining us. Key, for sure. thanks for joining us as well from the uh, Weather Center. Should I play it again one more time? Blizzard Watch. All right. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we can never get to use that very often. I mean, you it was know. the first time, probably the last. It will be. I think Greg yeah. might be having a talk with Corey. Yeah. yeah. Podcast. I'm thinking I won't get to play with this equipment anymore when yeah. Key's not here. I'm like, no more of that. But anyway, folks, yeah, in all serious, stay safe. Uh, be prepared. Just, again, help your neighbors out. And uh, it's like all the other things. We'll get through it. Sun will come out. Snow will melt. And uh, we'll be on with our lives. But uh, we appreciate you. Also, check us out on uh, all of our social medias at City of Tehachapi. Real-time information. Facebook, Instagram. Uh, Twitter as well, and uh, we'll catch you in the next edition of Tehachapod. Tehachapod is a conversation about Tehachapi featuring community members who make this such a special place to call home. If you have a question or a thought you'd like to share, email media at tehachapicityhall.com.